Hytale is about to release a new update showcasing their progress over the last two years. The game has been trending recently, people are even getting tattoos, so hype is rising again. But how did we suddenly get here? Well, the Hytale community and you viewers kind of had a hand in all of this. There's been lots of demand for more updates about Hytale, and as they've continued to answer questions about the project on Twitter, the game director John Hendricks cracked and said if he hit 3,000 followers, he'd ask the CEO Noxie if they can release a new blog post. John previously teased an update before the end of the year, so it was just a matter of when he'd hit 3,000. And you should know this community by now, it only took 24 hours. Even with John trying to purge followers, it was safe to say we had this in the bag. True to his word, John even tweeted Noxie to ask if they could release a blog post and confirmed that it may not be immediate, as they don't have one in their back pocket. More that now they're starting to think about it. All of this was like two months ago though, when they were already really excited to share the team's work. Then in the middle of October, John confirmed that they're drafting up more things to share from the team. Starting with this new Halloween postcard that was shared by the official Hytale account, featuring three adventurers gathered around a mysterious campfire as one tells spooky stories. There's a few creatures in the background to spot, with the smoke forming into a kind of silhouette of Varen, the antagonist of Hytale's story. This piece was actually created by Righteous Pebble, who is a community member who now works on the project. Pretty cool to see a fan of the game is now creating art that hypes it up. This time, we know the updates will be quite substantial. A user did mention that the last blog post was definitely aimed more towards hiring. John said, point landed. And that, to be fair, they have had some very exciting hires since then because of that. This time, however, there will probably be a lot less focus on finding new team members and more showcasing the game's progress. We are very likely going to see the reveal of the new engine if they finished it. John did ask someone what kind of video they should reveal on Twitter, and if that is the case, we can expect a bunch of gameplay clips to analyze when it drops. However, despite fellow creator mine asking, or, or should I say demanding, I don't expect we'll be getting a new trailer just yet. Worth a shot though, and Buddha did say that we will get another trailer one day. So, going back to the blog post, when will we see this? Well, with the pattern of the team dropping blog posts towards the weekend and at the end of the month, the most likely candidate in my eyes is November. December is a really busy period for everyone, and the team will likely be on holiday towards the new year. So, the best bet we have is sometime between this week and the last week of November. To be fair, my confidence in the team delivering is quite high. We've mentioned before how the game director, John Hendricks, used to work at Microsoft and for Minecraft, and when asked why, with all of his experience, did he decide Hytale was the game worth his time and effort, he answered, I love the genre and specifically working with creators, which came from my time in Minecraft. So when meeting Noxie and the team, we instantly hit it off. I was 100% in. We know Hytale will have a heavy focus on creators and creatives of all kinds. Not just YouTubers, but artists, animators, developers, and everything in between. And having people like John, who understand the obstacles we're gonna face at the core of decision making for the game, is a really good sign. Fun fact, John's favorite mob is a cacti, and he even said that someday he'd tell us the story about how he ended up as one of the first major video content creators for the web, back when he was a different type of director. Which, I'm not gonna lie, sounds like a pretty interesting story. Creator friend mine asked, what haven't you done in your life? And John jokingly replied, shipped Hytale, working on it. Honestly, not just John, the team has a host of really talented people who've worked for some major games in the past. Not just Minecraft, but Half-Life, Fortnite, Roblox, Call of Duty, other Riot games, and that's just to name a few. It's really exciting when you think about it, all of these minds coming together for one project. Speaking of talent, Sean McCafferty, Hytale's studio director, showcased a 3D printed figure of a Trog, one of Hytale's native factions. This was a figure which he received as a donation reward from our annual Hytale charity event, which I'll be speaking more on later. He claimed he found it on a shelf in the office and it looked like it wanted to be painted. I love the small touches with the grass and rocks. Recently, the website has also had a big update with new team members being added to the list, such as Alex Tokmakshiv, a UX designer whose in-game avatar I featured in the thumbnail of my last video, Carl Deckard, a senior games design manager who worked on Half-Life, Diablo 3, Infamous 2, and the Metroid Prime series. Freeze, a gameplay engineer who wants Hytale to be the springboard for the next generation of creative minds. Mario Vuong, a tools engineer that likes noodles, who also has a really cool avatar, I love those glasses. And Shialto, who says serving and slaying is a full-time job, oh, and so is quality assurance. 
The jobs page has also been updated, and while there's been all sorts of jobs over the years, and the devs have even said not to read too much into them, there are only seven job postings that remain. The team have really been whittling the list down from those 25 to 30 roles that were there at the start of the year, and this is the lowest we've seen in a long time. Also, some of these roles feel like they'd only be needed quite well on into development. Things like engineering for the mobile version and software engineers to work on continuous delivery once the game is out. Considering the state of the gaming industry right now with all the layoffs that are going on, it's crazy to see that Hypixel Studios are continuing to hire and seemingly going stronger than ever, with Budacat, the community manager, stating we are growing and going strong. With Hytale trending on Twitter recently, more eyes being on the game again, and the community becoming increasingly more active in the lead up to the blog post, I just want to state that it is going to be important once again to keep your expectations reasonable. On that note, for you skeptics, this is going to interest you. A confirmed ex-developer of Hytale recently came forward and commented on the game publicly, stating, I worked at Hytale on Entity AI five to six years ago, around 2017 to 2018, which was the year leading up to the trailer. And at the time, he says, the game was in a great state. I left the company after about a year, and how the game hasn't been released since then still baffles me. The developers I worked with when I was on there were some of the smartest people I've worked with to this day. I can only imagine they're just as frustrated in the lack of a release. He then goes on to say, the game truly was as well developed and creative as advertised. So let's summarize all of this. It's important to note that this person did stop working on the project in 2018, likely even before the trailer even released. That was before they were bought by Riot and expanded the scope of the game and began developing a whole new engine, so this person isn't really aware of all the complexities that have since resulted in the game's delay. They very well could have still been under the impression that Hypixel still planned to release the same thing they advertised five years ago in the trailer. But of course, we know, and if you don't now you do, that the project's scope has drastically increased since then. Under Riot, the team likely have a host of new goals they've been working towards. Although I'm happy to hear that the trailer didn't over-exaggerate what the game was as much as people thought, and that the things they showed really were possible in the game at the time, I'm sure it does frustrate some people to hear that the game was apparently in a good state all that time ago. If that was the case, why wasn't it released? Well, we know that after the response of the trailer, the team really got a wake-up call, and they clearly must have decided that whatever state the game was in could have been much better, and that way they would have been able to match the expectations of those 60 million viewers. Obviously, the team couldn't foresee the future, and I think had Hytale released in 2019 or 2020, whilst some may believe that it would have truly met the hype, even ex-devs it seems, some that I've spoken to think it would have been short-lived. A lot of unforeseen problems, a lot of half-fulfilled promises, and most definitely a lot of crunch time and a lot of pressure on what was then a fairly small team. The groundwork that Hypixel Studios has been laying since then, the infrastructure that they're forming to support this game, this project, this engine, is going to help make Hytale last for so many more years. I think in the team's eyes, that's what it all comes down to. Not just how fast can we get something playable out, but how well will Hytale truly be received by the masses when we can all finally play it in its entirety. The wider, more expanded vision that they carved out after the trailer, after they were acquired by Riot, and received much more investment. Now, when Hytale has released, we'll obviously see some more push for an event or convention of some kind. We even saw the team internally tease this as a bit of an in-joke earlier this year. With Minecraft, we've seen quite the evolution from old in-person Minecons that lasted multiple days and streamed hours of panels, to uh, almost cookie-cutter single streams that reveal a little bit about the next update in just over an hour. Of course, with this recent Minecraft Live Earth Con thingy that just went by, people in the community were curious where a Hytale convention or Hycon may take place. Despite it not being officially confirmed, of course, John still expressed that he felt an event that was both in person and online would be best. In the poll on Twitter, the US obviously won as a favorite location, but I'm curious where specifically in the US people would want it to take place. Focus then turned to modding the game for a bit, when a user asked John if in Hytale we will be able to play something like a One Piece mod, or would it be some kind of copyright issue? And that's a good question, because on platforms like Minecraft before they were bought by Microsoft, unlicensed and unofficial servers and mods were really common. Nowadays, however, rules are fairly strict, with specific brands and officially licensed content being released mostly on Bedrock. Even some Roblox games have faced some copyright and legal issues for using different franchise and brands without 
proper licensing. John responded by saying yes, on Hytale the content would need to be licensed technically. It doesn't make it impossible, he continues. I've worked with a lot of licensed content, but it can be a process. It also stands to see how enforced certain guidelines will be on the platform and how lenient they may be on individual players and their worlds that aren't as monetized. It's curious to think about how they could integrate other brands onto the platform though, collaborations with movie and music studios, Marvel, Star Wars, different anime, other Riot games even, perhaps in the form of servers, lots of different cosmetics, or even custom pre-made assets that can be added to your world. And as I said, obviously there are some creative liberties you can take and workarounds to create projects that resemble but are not infringing on licenses of certain brands. You could still likely assemble cosmetics to look like Luffy from One Piece and then go and sail the seas of a custom water world like a pirate. Elsewhere, more game features have been confirmed or discussed. A user asked if morphing or character model changing is still a thing since the clip we saw a few years back. John said yes, changing player model is an important part of creative play, but also a fun feature to work into creative mode and competitive experiences like mini games. As far as music and instruments, John confirmed yes, there will be. He obviously can't share the details yet, but with all the tracks created by composer Oscar Garvin, it wouldn't be right to deny avatars the ability to play along as well. With that, he also replied to someone else saying he's a huge fan of creating music in-game, but how it will work on Orbis has not been decided. How it will work across Hytale will then depend on creators. This one confused me a little bit. We've seen instruments in the game since the trailer, so I would like to think that they've at least solidified some form of system for playing them. John expressed how he was randomly thinking about how important it is to get the feel of block placement just right in a game. He said it's like the Mario jump of the genre. When a user was critical of why the game was taking so long just to adjust things like block placement, John replied that the simpler answer is that he's just a designer who's worked on block games for a long time and thinks block placement is important. He didn't say that they hadn't done it yet, just that it was important. Mine then asked about inventory management and whether it was something that the team has considered, mostly in regards to the variety of blocks and items that are going to be in the game, there's an overwhelming amount to even think about, and we've only really ever seen basic inventories. John replied, absolutely, including the unique challenges of different game modes as well, adventure versus creative being a big one. Another quick one, will it be possible to play Hytale without internet? John answered yes, that's the plan, but not all of Hytale of course. Hopefully you'll be able to play creative worlds and single player adventure mode, obviously multiplayer would have to be relegated to online. Community manager Buddha was asked by a user whether the beta will be private or more public. He said he's not going to get into the weeds about this one for obvious reasons, but he can hopefully reassure us by saying that it's definitely important to hear the feedback and insights of creators in various ways. John was then asked if he had a favorite something from Hytale that has been publicly revealed. He said, I have to go with the playtest. Noxie and I were just watching highlights from it again the other day. We got to watch people having a really great time playing one aspect of Hytale and we learned a lot. Hard to beat that, but also Ferens. This hilarious animation was recently posted kind of out of nowhere by my friend and notable community member Powerbyte. Make sure to go follow him and check out his work. This video features a race of sorts with Hytale models. There's no real way to explain this, but brilliant nonetheless. And speaking of the community, in a bit of a surprise, a Hytale YouTuber called Jet Hytale ended up getting a tattoo. They posted a picture on Twitter of this insane piece they got of Gaia, who is, for those who don't know, a character and godly figure from Hytale. That's some dedication right there. John was quick to reply, that's one way to say no pressure. And he's right, because if people are getting tattoos of the game at this point, I'm imagining the team are feeling lots of pressure to deliver. During all of the follower commotion that we spoke about earlier with John, he did mention that he'd be perfectly happy if his follower count was an exact match of the Hytale team, the R Place crew, and members of the Thankmas event. And speaking of Thankmas, Buddha also tweeted about his excitement for the event officially happening again this year. The Hytale community's charity live stream is going to be taking place on the 9th of December on this channel, where you'll have a chance to get your hands on figures like this 3D Ferran in winter clothing, created again by Powerbyte and inspired by the concept art in the recent blog post. Click this video to keep talking Hytale, stay safe, and keep free.